What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Bird's Eye View. I'm your host, the one and only Erica McCall, aka Bird, because my last name, everybody, if you're listening right now, everyone say it together. My last name is McCall, and we're back and better. I'm here with my guest. Today, my guest is here in person, which is a lot of fun because we get to interact like face to face, which is a, it's a different type of experience versus interacting via Zoom. So this one's going to be fun. My guest is actually my roommate for the past couple of weeks. So I asked her to be on the show. I know she's an amazing basketball player. I know she has a crazy story, a crazy good story. Yeah. That's but I feel like is that I feel like is that I feel like worth though. Anyways, for those who do not know me, I'm Eric McCall. I've played professional basketball for five years, four years in Hungary, one year in Turkey, played all around the league, Washington, Indiana, Atlanta, Minnesota. Shout out to Big Seal, all the flowers. And currently I'm in Phoenix, I'm out here training, doing rehab. Um, that's where me and my roommate, um, AKA Destiny Slocum, <laughs> is our guest for today. We're staying out here in Phoenix. Um, I just came back from El Paso, y'all. I was working a basketball camp. When I tell you my body is hurting, not from, not from, not from moving any type of certain way. It's just from standing. I'm just not used to standing that long. Like the camp is from nine to four with a 12 to one lunch break at 12, 15, never failed round the dot. The kids wanted to play knockout again. And I'm like, y'all, I need time to recuperate. I just sat down. I just ate lunch. Please, please give me time. But it was a lot of fun. I love working with the kids. I, I found that, you know, it's, I feel like it can be kind of a passion of mine. Like coaching young children? Yeah, yeah, I actually really like it. The only thing <laughs> is my doctor said when I'm finished playing basketball, I need to have some type of non-impact job. And I kind of feel like coaching is impact. It's heavy on the legs, it is. heavy on the feet. So if you guys have any suggestions, I asked on Twitter, but if you guys want to write in any suggestions for, for future coaches <laughs> potentially on what we can do for our feet, our legs, our body to help us withstand or withstand you know all that impact on our knees and all that good stuff put it in there I'm tired I just slept all day today's my day off I just slept all day and it's those kids they give you energy and they take it away they give it and they take it absolutely <laughs> but anyways once again as usual I'm talking too much it's time to reel it back in get back into the show I started this show because I wanted to educate people on women's basketball women's professional basketball and what we have to do the struggles the highs and the lows a lot of people are asking us hey what's this experience like especially overseas even within the league people are asking us what is it like when people are so shocked you know when they see us flying commercial so you know I'm here to you know just educate and and bring in knowledge from players that I've known and played against um and even some 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 new friends that I'm meeting throughout the way and so this is why Bird's Eye View is starting this is why we're rolling we're deep into season two and it's been a blast so thank you all for listening thus far if you guys if you guys want to do me a huge favor and rate the show write in some comments about the show I will be hugely blessed it will help the show expand um, hopefully getting some sponsors soon and um, hopefully for me take off you know I think this show has been a, a great landing not landing but a takeoff I'm currently wearing <laughs> a takeoff shirt for those who are watching and no pun intended I love puns it's been a great way for me to take off my career um, outside of basketball so anyways today's guest is no other than I already said it before Destiny Slocum <laughs> Destiny is is fresh off an overseas season playing in Turkey and playing in France. And she here goes, she's here with us today, training in Arizona. Thank you, Destiny, for being on. I know. Thanks for having me. This is gonna be awesome. I'm excited. Yes, she had no other choice. We were conversing. <laughs> no, I wanted to. <laughs> I wanted to, I swear. We were conversing about all her overseas experiences. I'm like, yo, you gotta get on the show and, and talk about this because this is good stuff. And I think people need to hear it, especially without your whole career. I think you have, like I said, I think you have a story that needs to be told that people need to hear. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get into it. First, let me read your bio because I gotta okay. hop on my guests. I always love to hop on my guests. Some people get a little uncomfortable. I know I get a little uncomfortable when people read my bio, but the fans gotta know who I'm bringing on. I always bring in heavy hitters. <laughs> so Destiny was drafted by the Las Vegas Aces in 2021, which was just last year. She's a freaking baby. I am. You might have been, you might be my youngest guest I've had. Let's go. She's four to the 14th overall pick. She's played for the Aces, and most recently, she had a little stint with the Atlanta Dream out there in Hotlanta. Yes, sir. 
In 2017, she was named the WBCA National Freshman of the Year while playing at Maryland. I've, you've been my first national, <laughs> national freshman. I think year. I was the first one to win the award, so. Is it the first award ever? Like, yeah, I was like the first one to get it, I think. Wow. Yeah, yeah, no. Little horns, little horns, little <laughs> horns, little horns, because it, history, we got history on the podcast. That's freaking big time. And of course, she was a two-time member of the all Pac-12 team. So me and you are the same. Let's go. Back to <laughs> I, pack. Yeah, back to pack. <laughs> I, am a, I am as well a two-time member. So I love having my Pac-12 <laughs> family on, on the show. Everyone's like, when are you going to bring in some, some East Coast guests? They coming, y'all. But let me hype up my West Coast. We don't get enough love Agreed. on the West Coast. So let me hype her up, all right? And she was also a two-time All-American honorable mention like I mentioned before she's played the Turkey and France as her rookie season overseas we're going to get into that a little later because I want to hear about all your experience with that we were talking about that so I'm excited for you guys to hear all right the bio is done you got through it the hard part the over. hard part is over now the fun begins because we have a small game called fast faves okay so it's going to be quick little quick little questions sometimes we, we talk about your answers but Okay. I love it. It's fun. It's one of my favorite parts of the show. So let's, let's begin. It. Okay. What has been your favorite conference to play? You played in the Pac-12. Well, Pac-12, for sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to explain why? Well, let me, let me tell the guests all the conferences you played. You played in the Pac-12, you played in the Big Ten, and you played in the SEC. Yeah. And, and the Pac-12 was right off the bat. Yeah. I had a feeling you were going to say that. It was easy. Pac-12, Pac for sure. Hashtag back to Pac. Why is that? Uh, I think I like being on the West Coast. I like uh, the like double headers. So you're okay. like playing the same people at the same time. And then I think I was familiar with a lot of the players because mm -hmm. I grew up on the West Coast. So it was more fun to like play like UCLA when I knew the players. Right. So, and I like the style of play. Yeah. It's competitive and every night is a tough game. So it is. The Pac 12 is a yeah. tough conference from like one to 12. Like even you might be a top team playing like the bottom team and you just may lose. Like yeah. that's how competitive it is. So that's why I'm like, that's what I'm trying to explain to people, all my listeners out there. I don't think I have a lot of Pac-12 listeners. I think I got a lot of SEC, a lot of ACC. Um, what's South Carolina? The, the SEC? SEC. It, yeah. would go, it would go Pac-12 for me Big or SEC Big Ten. Big Ten was worse for sure. The Big Ten is the worst? Yeah. Dang, Meg. We had Meg Duffson on here. <laughs> no, I'm, <sorry. laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sure she'll make the different, but... I love it. I got to give get a shout out to the Pac-12, back to Pac. Yes, sir. Oregon State, Stanford. Hated playing them. <laughs> great team. <laughs> All right, next question. What was your favorite WNBA player watching? Growing up? Yep. Uh, Tarazi, for sure. Mm, nice. I, know. I think I just liked her swag. I'm not going to lie. Like, growing up, the confidence, and it was like the most, she put in Phoenix, and so it was the one of the closer teams to me right. where I could watch the games more often. So yeah, Tarazi, I love watching her grow. You know, her and my sister played together for ten years, so I no. grew up watching her. Yeah. And like, awesome. I was like, oh my gosh, this, this woman is amazing. Yeah, and I, I see, I see the similarities of it. You know, I see the swagger in your game. I see the way you you can be got a little sauce to it. I like that. You do. do I mean, do you talk like Tarazi? No. Okay. <laughs> in my head. In my head. In my head, in your head maybe over, overseas, maybe a little okay. bit sometimes. Okay, I like that. I like that. Hey, sometimes you gotta get a little saucy sometimes. overseas because yeah. they be trying to punk you. So sometimes you gotta bring it out. Valid. All right. Next question. Okay. Who was your favorite Las Vegas Aces vet? You were a rookie last year. Who was your favorite? Who favorite vet? Or maybe your closest. I'd say out of all the players, I was probably closest to. Like, or I talk the most to in general of like, hey, I'm coming to you with like right. rookie problems, you know, probably Raquana and Liz. Raquana Williams. Probably Raquana, Raquana Williams more. I probably went to her the most. Mm -hmm. Like if I had an issue or something, like I'm yeah. just like, hey, I'm feeling like this today. And she was probably the most helpful. But I talked to Liz too. Yeah, shout out to Liz. Shout out to, shout, yeah. shout out to baby. <laughs> no, I, that's great because that's an answer I don't think that a lot of people would would necessarily expect. I think a lot of people would expect Liz, the Asia's, you know. Yeah. Coming in and Raquana is, is some. We of were like, locker mates too. Like her locker is right next to me. So whenever I, I would just turn, I'd be like, I have, I have a question. 
<laughs> and she was so nice so it's awesome she's a bit of a silent assassin oh yeah so I can you know people don't really expect her to be like so vocal and I love that she she was yes. you know you know the vet that took care of you when you went to a device super helpful shout out to the vet yeah, yeah. mine was Candace Dupree shout out to her I was oh, like awesome. I was struck we played the same position too so that's awesome I was like watching every move I'm like okay this is what I need to do <laughs> yeah so shout out to vets that take care of their rookies we talked about Sylvia Fast when she took care of Jillian Aline yes her rookie year so vets are so important for the game they're they, they help the future come up you know without vets who are we today with our vets it's very true amen next question okay favorite french cuisine you just finished playing in france. oh What's i don't know favorite? if i have a cuisine mm-hmm. but the croissants in france mm-hmm. are unbeatable like walking to, there's a bakery on every corner a flower shop and a bakery and i'm telling you the croissants are i can't eat america croissants anymore I won't. It's it, honestly, I feel like I, it's a sin if I do. I feel you too. Like I be going somewhere like this thing. This croissant is not croissanting. No, it's not. It's like not warm. It's not soft. You know, you didn't order in French, so I'm not eating it. You had a different experience. So I live in <laughs> I live in Hungary, and and even when I went to just just Europe, I was like European bread yes. is killing American bread. You guys do not understand. You have to go to Europe to just simply, to simply understand. Like we don't have, they don't have like no, no wonder bread. Like no. that, that don't exist. Everything is fresh. It is. You go to little bakeries, you go to little yes. shops, and they'd be like, oh, and they cut up for you, and you're like, wow, this is fresh. Chef's kids. I would go to <laughs> when I go to Hungary. Like I would get like fresh baguettes oh. all the time. Like there, yeah. I didn't, I didn't even order get or not order, but just buy regular bread. Like that was rare. Yeah. Regular bread it tastes worse. I think I like American bread better. It's no in America. Yes, even the crepes. Like in France, mm-hmm. I won't eat American a crepe made in America. Yeah, you were spoiled. I know. Now Dang. I'm like, now I'm like, oh, I I had it, I had it good. Dang. Like food wise, yeah, like, France was nice. Result. That's good. How do you <laughs> order, how do you say it? Because people, because people say in America, we'll say that we say croissant. I took French lessons for like three months when I was in Londres, but we didn't learn croissant. Like how to but say But look how you said it right there. Croissant. croissant. You croissant. see how you say it like croissant. that. In France, they don't pronounce like the last letters of their words. Mm. So it's probably like croissant or something like that. They're so bougie. They're so bougie. The croissant. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. And bad and bougie. Once again, another amigos. They, I no mean, reference. all right, so you need to play in <laughs> France because they will understand everything you're saying. <laughs> I love it. Hopefully, hey, maybe France next year. We'll see. We'll see. All right, last question. Okay. Are you ready for this one? This was this one's a toughie. All right, I'm ready. What's your favorite thing to do in Idaho? <laughs> Definitely talking from Idaho. Y'all, I think she's the first person I met from Idaho. Ooh. I think a lot of people want to know, what is there to do in Idaho? Uh, the, I mean, whew. Man. What's the main thing? You There's a lot of outdoor something? stuff. Right. That's what I figured. So my, like my favorite thing to do outdoors, probably, probably raft the river or like mm. our, the Boise river is really popular. Okay. So, or whitewater raft or something like that. Mm-hmm. I like, yeah, I'm an outdoors girl. Rafting. I like to do that. Okay. If you guys ever go to Idaho, you got a raft. Go to the Boise river. Yeah. Or, or pay it if you want a whitewater raft. There we go. I didn't know. I didn't know that. All I know is learn something new. Potatoes. I don't even know where to find the potatoes in Idaho. Everyone always says that. I'm like, honestly, I live in the city. So that's, you know what? And Baker, so everyone says, you guys are a farm town. I'm like, yeah, but I never see like the farm. Like, yeah. I'm in the city. Like I never see that. So I understand. But okay. Rafting and potentially potatoes. Who knows? Could be a myth. Fries. So the fries be, are good there. The fries are good there. If you guys want amazing fries, Idaho it is. There you go. All right. You made it. You made it past the game portion. Uh, I enjoyed that. that Did you funny. do it? Great. That's what I was aiming for. I always try to make it. Fun questions to loosen us up before we get into the interview. All right. Okay. Interview questions begin now. Let's do it. Let's do this. Okay. Here we go. Let's just start off with your college days. Okay. All right. Let's start off with Maryland. Why did you, why did you want to go to Maryland? You're, you're, you're from Idaho. What, what attracted to you in the first place? Um, that's a good question. I think like the whole backstory behind it is like, so I was actually committed prior to committing to Maryland to Washington for mm. a year. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, that makes sense when we get to, when we get to Arkansas. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and so I decommitted actually, and we were watching like Maryland play. And my dad was like, I like the way they play. And I kind of wasn't really thinking about much else. Honestly, I was kind of overwhelmed by everything yeah. like all at once. And so uh, I took a visit out to Maryland they needed a point guard. My dad was like, you'll play right away. And that's kind of honestly, I was like, I'm not mad. I want to play basketball. And that's yeah. what I'm here for. So I went out to Maryland. Yeah. And in Maryland, she went, she was the freshman of the year, went out there and freaking balled out. How was your experience there? It, it was good. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think basketball wise too, Maryland's basketball fit me really well. Right. I think 
two being like someone coming from Idaho. I wasn't very well known, but like having Shatori Walker Kimbrough, having Bree Jones, literally two all American seniors to pass the ball to. It was it was nice to play with people that were so like seasoned in college basketball. And I kind of rolled onto a team that had really, really, really good players. And so it was nice to be able to get 34, 33 minutes with these all stars. So I enjoyed my experience there. Yeah, that's rare as a rookie or as a freshman getting that many minutes. That means you were freaking good. Did you feel like you had to carry the team as a freshman or you feel like you had, you know, those leaders with Bree and Shatori that helped you kind of carry that weight? I definitely feel like Bree and Shatori carried the majority of the weight. I think just because I said like they're really seasoned. They knew what they wanted. Uh, There wasn't much their numbers were going to be retired in the, in the rafters after like they knew all that. And so they were super nurturing, like, especially Brie was my roommate. Uh, and so she was super helpful through everything. And just, they kind of just like, Hey, we got you like, come on. But they also trusted me a lot, which was, I think being a freshman, the trust and being able to play with people that are that good and be like, we trust you. It gave me a different uh, form of confidence. I think. That's dope. You were a player that I was not. It took me a while to learn the system. It took me, <laughs> I was, a, me and like we talked about with yeah. Carly Sims and, you know, we were dang knuckleheads. They always go like, Carly and Bird. I mean, <laughs> Carly and Bird, Carly and Bird, you know, so we became the nickname Kerr because at that point it was just, just, com- just combine the names together. They're both messing up every time. <laughs> <laughs> so kudos to you. for being That was that one rookie. school though. One, like one. Okay. Like I've experienced that mm-hmm. before. Okay. All right. So after, okay. So let's just let's talk about breakdown. Okay. Your, your freshman of the year season. Okay. Each night you going into the game, like, Hey, I'm, I'm getting this much or, or you just going to like, Hey, we're getting the win. I got to carry my team. Um, and just naturally happened. I think it just naturally happened. I think honestly, I kind of just went in and just played. I didn't really think much. Like when I think back of my development at Maryland, there wasn't much of like, here's how I'm developing my game. I really just naturally played Mm -hmm. like how I knew. And I feel like that's why I fit the system really well because there wasn't a ton of plays. There wasn't a ton of offense, like of like schemes. It was just kind of like, let's go get a bucket and then get back and defend. It was just kind of like grit basketball, which I enjoyed. But I think every night I just went in and was like, I want to win. Cause there was points we were like number three in the country. We played UConn that year, sold out our arena and stuff like that. And like, I'm just like, a kid in a candy shop like yeah. I'm a freshman playing UConn like in a sold out arena so like I was just super blessed that's how it felt to me that's what's up much kudos to you like I said that that's a, a huge honor especially for a freshman that means like you are playing like a senior like <laughs> like that, <laughs> that's what Tari saw and say like you're not playing like a freshman essentially you know you're you're playing as one of the best players in the country so that means you're pretty darn good shout out I hope that brings you yeah yeah, yeah. The, the one club I played for my whole entire career <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I met your club teammate the other day. Yes. So, hey, shout out to her also for, for helping you get to that. Absolutely. Get to that point. That's what's up. All right. So, you finished up freshman of the year at Maryland. Yeah. You decided you wanted to transfer to Oregon State. Yeah. What was your decision? Why was your decision that? Like, why did I want to leave? Mm-hmm. I think initially, like, just going. So, our, it's actually taken me a long time. I never really understood why I wanted to leave, mm-hmm. but in the media, everyone thought I was just kind of want to be close to home, right. which is not true at all. And uh, I think as I've really, really dug deep and like, why did I want to leave? Why did I feel the urge I wanted to leave? It really just came down to the fact that nothing about Maryland besides enjoying the basketball there was I there for. Like, mm. I didn't enjoy the school. I didn't enjoy what I was doing, the education part of it. Like nothing. When I had a bad day, I was somewhere I didn't want to be. And so I think in the long run, it was just kind of like, this is not the place for me. And I felt that like down deep. And then people can always say like, oh, but you played so well. And I'm like, yeah, but basketball is this big. Yes. In, in, in terms yes. of your whole entire college experience. Yes. And so knowing that I knew at the end of the year, I was like, I know this isn't the place where, where I actually want to be and where I need to be. And so I kind of just followed my heart, just kind of went for it. In Oregon State, it was. Oregon State, yeah. I went, I took three visits ended up deciding to go to Oregon State and that's where I felt like uh I always tell people like like what would you tell someone who's like starting to look for a college and I think truthfully look for a place that you would go if basketball was taken away like the day you got there would you be happy to be on campus because then on the worst days because you're gonna have a bad day anywhere you go that's the fact no matter if you went to freaking UConn no matter if you went to the 
a D3 school, you're going to have a bad day yep. oh, and it's going to be a lot of them. Yep. And so I think like walking out into Corvallis, walking into off Oregon State's campus every day, even if I had a bad practice, I was in a good place with good mm -hmm. people that I really enjoyed being around. And I feel like nourished and like strengthened me in ways that uh, I didn't have before. That's beautiful. That's, it's, I think a lot of high schoolers, even people transferring need to listen to that because I think a lot of them, um, are going in just solely for basketball like I was talking yeah. I was just listening to the spaces they're talking about recruiting and they're talking about how like girls like um they're like yeah I'm, I'm really worried about my major like I'm just I'm just going for which is like for crazy. basketball and the coach is like what <laughs> like which is so important for us especially as women because we have to yeah, finish our, you know our entire career so we have to essentially we're all leaving with a degree and so yes you don't want to go into to college but taking classes that you freaking hate yeah that's the worst. <laughs> I, yeah, that was the big thing. When I went to Oregon State, I, I was a digital communication arts major, which is like film and photography. And I loved it. Like it changed my entire, like, I was like, oh, this is what I want to do. This is like, and also in sport, like the sports area. So I was like, whoa, okay. Like going to school is fun. Right. What, which did, I love school. So did you have a major at Maryland or were you still? I was a business major at Maryland. I don't know why I started off like that. And I switched like three times. I just could not find one that like fit with me yeah and so it was just like and I take school super important like yeah, of course. because uh I'm a first generation college student like and to me so yes yeah. yeah, love that but like uh even I feel that way now like I'm like do I want to do my doctorate right now mm. like I just think education so important and I love I love it so it's like I want to actually pour into it if I'm gonna get a free education I'm not just gonna go take random classes just so I can play basketball like I'm gonna get the both of best work like best of both worlds if I want it absolutely I mean even if your goal is to get to the WNBA like you've got to enjoy your experience absolutely. in college and, and, and enjoying your experience in college will allow you to enjoy the basketball more yes because shoot if you have a bad day with basketball like Ooh. what what is your outlet like I have my teammates like yeah we used to like just sing in the locker room that was my thing like I miss college so I miss that locker room so much yeah because of my teammates and, and the environment that I had at Stanford just the, the amount of resources that I had and if you're not if you don't have that it's right. just like overseas. It, it really is. I, I think you're like teammates and like being around like-minded people, I think yes. too. I think that's, it yes. was, that it's a big thing. And you, I mean, you don't really get to pick and choose who your teammates are, yes. but like, to me, I know at Oregon state who they're recruiting and yes. what kind of yes. people they recruit. And so it's like the rarity that you have one bad, like one bad, but even then it's like, you're around great people. Mm -hmm. So even if there is someone who's a life sucker or something like that in there, it's like, usually being around us, they can develop and be like oh actually this is a safe space for me like yeah. to be who I am so yeah. that was I love that part of like being around my teammates at OSU yeah for sure that's that's beautiful and, and that's a big point too when coaches are recruiting they typically recruit good coaches yeah recruit a certain type of player that have similar mold yeah than the rest of their their players because they need them to get along with them absolutely I think that was the same at, at Stanford I think everyone knows that Stanford recruits a certain type of player yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely you can see it, it visually visually you can see it what that you know the type of yes. player that Stanford recruits and so I think that's the same for for Scott for Scott Root and the type of players he recruits. I'm I'm super close friends with one of his players and yeah I think it's kind of a similar so I, I think, think you would have got along yeah. well at Stanford as well probably yeah, yeah I think so. I, I I truly think so I, I know your personality now I'm like oh yeah she would have got along just fine we would have been fine at Stanford yeah. we would have been besties <laughs> oh we wouldn't have to play at the same time but it's okay you're I, right you would enjoy it you would enjoy my teammates that that I played with Definitely. at a younger at a younger age but a cool okay so Oregon State mm -hmm. break down that experience as a beaver in Corvallis, Oregon. Now she considers like her second home, which I've been like, Corvallis. Well, every time I went no. to <laughs> Corvallis, oh, that's too Every time <laughs> Sydney's gonna kill me listening to this. No. Every time I <laughs> went to Corvallis, I'm like, there's nothing to do there, but like it's a college. You, when you go there, yeah, it's a college. It's town, a college so. town. You when you go there, you, you find stuff to do. There we go. That's like that for any town. Yeah. You find you find what you like to do. And then that's what Corvallis is. So you enjoyed your experience. There. Absolutely. Okay. Let's see. Uh, I think Oregon State challenged me a lot. Mm -hmm. I think in a lot of different aspects. I think as a player, most definitely, uh, the system is so much different than what I was used to. It's very slow paced. It's very run like a ton of plays. Very, very methodical about the way uh Scott thinks about the game and how he breaks things down, watching film for like hour, 30 minutes, you know, like it's super detail oriented, which all my teammates know, everyone knows, like I struggle with that a little bit. Like mm -hmm. I've grown up just go on the court and just play. 
And so like, I think my, my first redshirt year, my freshman year, I struggled a lot of like concepts, understanding kind of like why we were doing what we were doing. Mm. So like, I learned to ask a lot of questions, but I think in the long run, it was the most beneficial place for my game to develop because I don't think at either place I went, Maryland or Arkansas, I learned that part of it mm. so in depth yeah. and it was very That's defensive minded. Yeah. And so it was like, I was not, I've never been in a place where it was like defense first. We could score 40 points a game, but our other, the other team scoring 39. It's like, okay, I've never thought like that before. Mm. So it was interesting. I also played the two there for a little bit. Versus at Maryland. You had only played the one my entire mm -hmm. career. So like Which that is a was, big difference. I think a lot of people yeah. like when you like one and two, like, well, it's only one position. Like, oh, I'm like, that's, it's, it's a big difference, especially when you have the mindset of you're the, the floor general, you're carrying a your team, you have to know your position and then go into the two. Like, it's just, it's a completely different role. It, it is. I think like I had always played the one, which is more of like the playmaker facilitator yeah. and like you can score, but you score based off of like actions mm -hmm. that, oh, okay, this person gave me a wide open three kick right. out. I'm going to score like this. It's not really destined for you. But then there's like the two where it's like, you're the primary score. Mm -hmm. So your mindset has to be scored. And I think mm -hmm. that was the hard transition for me was like from playmaker to like, oh, I'm looking for everyone else. And I'm thinking of myself last when you're the playmaker, you're right. thinking of yourself first and yeah. everyone else last low yeah. key. And so it's like, which is not a bad thing because that's the point of the two yeah, go score, yeah. like go get a bucket. Mm -hmm. So that was hard for me. I think that that situation, but, but it helped me grow because I would have never faced that before. Yeah. And so I've played the two overseas. I played the two when I was at Vegas for a little bit, like, and so without that situation, I wouldn't really be as comfortable with playing the two as I probably would if I just played the one my entire career. Yeah, I mean, it helps you grow, helps you. And then, like you said, the basketball IQ probably skyrocketed, you know, yes. adjusting from Maryland to Oregon State. Like, once again, I'm just going to shout out, I think that's just West Coast basketball. No, <laughs> it really, it's so different though, like, truthfully. <laughs> I think it's West Coast basketball. I think the style of play is, like you said, a lot, a lot more methodical in the way that we go. It's just attention to detail. Or maybe that's just Stanford and Oregon State. I think Scott's a very similar coach than Tara, so that could be but I think even with UCLA I'm thinking of UCLA I think of yeah of, of, of Lindsay Gottlieb when she was at at Cal now she's at at uh at SC and I think yeah I think that's and I'm sorry I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna probably get smoked on Twitter but the University of Southern California is the real SC no. not South Carolina oh okay I'll say it. don't even ask me <laughs> every time someone says USC I think I think South or not South Carolina I think USC like California but then they're like no no like South Carolina I'm like they're gonna smoke me but you know what I will say that now the women's basketball is the South Carolina women's basketball has become a lot more popular it's become a lot yeah. more successful I think a lot of people now when they hear SC they they think about South Carolina so I will give kudos to that but guys when I'm thinking SC I'm thinking that's what I think too the Trojans okay <laughs> but yeah okay so basketball IQ skyrocket you had two successful seasons at Oregon State yeah you you played very well there all Pac-12 you played with Sydney Weiss did you play with, no, you didn't play with Sydney because she, she graduated. You played with, let me think, let me think, let me think. Um, Michaela uh, Pivik. Pivik. Yes, yes, yes. yes. We, she was, uh, went to a Stanford visit. That's how I remember her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you played with, with great players and she went on and got drafted. So successful season at, at Oregon State. We finish up. Yeah. You, do, you know what? Let's go back. Let's backtrack. I, okay. I to ask a question All right. that I wanted to ask you. Your red shirt season. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about that because I think I think a, a lot of people don't talk about what a red shirt season, the mentality that you have to have, the things that you go through as a red shirt. Yeah. Talk about that experience at Oregon State. I think that my red shirt year was difficult. I think because like you're so detached from the team. Mm -hmm. And so like being such a big part of my team before, freshman at Maryland, and then like stepping into a role where you're not playing, you're not traveling, uh, you're not like intrude. I don't take space up in the coach's mind because he's worried about yeah. this year. And so it's kind of like, I'll deal with you like next year. Like, yeah, give me workouts. Yeah. Let's work out, keep her in shape type of thing. Let's get her better stuff like that. But it's like, the goal is this year. So yeah. it's like, he's not going to waste his time thinking about one person when there's 12 people standing right in front of him that he has to dictate right then and there. And so like, I think it was weird to kind of feel like a part of a team, but not. Mm -hmm. And so, but like, I mean, I think that helped me grow too. Cause one, that was the year that I was like, I want to do this because that could your retro year can really make you like, I think be like, do I want to do this or do I not? Because you're doing everything everyone else is doing and reaping none of the benefits <laughs> of it. Like you're just not like, you're non-existent in the weirdest way, but I was super thankful for my year. I feel like I just 
it allowed me to like learn a system that was super difficult for me for one but also like I played the three my red shirt year mm. so I didn't play the one my Jeez. whole red shirt year yeah and so I learned another position that I've randomly played overseas so the the three the three wow because they had two point guards at the time right and so it was like no need for me in practice yeah. to do anything so a lot of times I was either on scout mm -hmm. trying to be someone in the pack or I was the three and so it was like so weird for me to just sit in the corner and just wait for three pointers but like I wasn't a great three-point shooter before that but I think that kind of had my mindset because Kat Tudor, I mean, she was the other three-point shooter and that's all, I mean, she's amazing at it. Yep, yep. And so it was like, we had, to, I had to match her. So it's like, yeah. I developed my three-point shot in that aspect. So weird things come from like weird situations. Everything happens for a reason. Absolutely. Look at you, your, your, your IQ grew, your three-point shot was developed, you know. I think a retro I I couldn't imagine doing a retro season I think it takes <laughs> mental toughness a lot yeah. of mental toughness to get through a red shirt season especially like dang coach would be yelling at you too like dang like there was yes there was one time they went to USC and UCLA they played the LA's there was one at USC they had like 25 turnovers and then at UCLA had a 27 turnovers mm -hmm. they came back he wrote it on the board and he was like we're gonna run for every turnover in my head I was like I wasn't even there mm -hmm. I wasn't even there like I was I was wasn't mad but I was just like I had no effect on like if I could improve that or not I just have to run for it yep so like that was those were the moments where I was like I'm thankful to be here and I'm like this is hard situation because like I I didn't, I didn't even do anything or like watching film. I'm never on film. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm trying to learn, but I'm also like, how can I grow? But like, I'm not a part of this. So it's really hard. So you have to really, really find the small pieces yeah. in it. Yeah. That's tough. especially you don't, you don't see yourself. So like how it's, it's tough to, to yeah. just gotta look. maybe did you like focus on like one teammate? You're like, okay, I'll, I'm going to look at her and she's playing my position. I like tried to pay attention to the one a lot because I okay. knew I was going to play the one. Mm -hmm. And so I tried to pay attention to that because I mean, everyone knows OSU has like 300 plays and like when you like learn one position, there's a bunch of different reads on it. So I knew, so I like try to pay attention to the one a little bit more so that when I was able to play, I didn't feel like I was restarting. Mm, okay. So, yeah. Woof. Shout out to, to shout out to the red shirters. <laughs> They're, yes. they're actually non-existent now. So, I know, um, <laughs> unless you go, unless you transfer twice, I'm pretty sure. Okay, that's what it is now. Okay, yeah. The red shirt season, the red shirt player is like kind of eliminated. And so, yeah. So you didn't say, so okay, so now let's, let's move on. You, okay. you, you moved on to, to Arkansas. What made you want to leave Oregon State to, to play for Coach Neighbors? That one was really hard. Like, I did not want to leave OSU at all. Like, I, I mean, how you said, like, I think of OSU as, like, my second home. And I think, like, I, that's how I picture it. I think in that moment of, like, one, I knew OSU system – complimented my game but didn't compliment my game in the way that I feel like I wanted to portray to pro coaches mm. I feel like I'm up in transition I can and like that's how I play especially offensively and so like I knew that that was going to be something that I had to show again right. but I knew at OSU I wasn't gonna be able to do that and I mean I openly spoke that to the coaches and yeah. staff but that was like half the reason and the other half was that I mean, I said, I take my education super seriously. There was nothing I could master in at OSU. I oh, could wow. create a master, but there, I was interested in sports management. Mm -hmm. I was interested in doing something that involved like just what I wanted to do after basketball. Right. And I feel like it was an opportunity. Not one person in my family has a master's besides me now. Yeah. And so it's like, I'm like, I'm going to take care of this opportunity. And so it was kind of like a combo of both. It was just like, I think I had reached my end point with OSU. I mean, I'm on great terms with the coaching staff. I still go back yeah. there. I, I, mean, I feel like they understood. I feel like the situation, we both kind of felt the same way. And so I moved on to Arkansas. I Like they play up pace, they play fast. Me and neighbors go back from when I uh, had committed to Washington. And so I felt comfortable. I feel like I didn't have to relearn, like re reapproach myself to someone and be like, hi, I'm Destiny, Here, here's who I am. Right. He knew me, he knew what I could bring to the table. And so I could step in and just go. Was he your first choice? Like, okay, I'm going to transfer. I'm going to, yeah, I, I want to go where Coach Neighbors is because Arkansas. I, I, it was between UCLA and Arkansas. Okay. And I decided on Arkansas, mm -hmm. but it was just like, uh, yeah, I think, I think just having him and knowing how well he knew me, right. I wanted to be treated like a senior because, mm -hmm. and like in that situation, I wanted to go somewhere and be, have someone have confidence in me and trust in me. I feel like he treats his players like pros. Yeah. He's like a pro like coach. Like yes. I remember like hearing stories of like Kelsey and, and Chantel uh, or Kelsey Plum and Chantel Olsen and pretty much you know, the whole team. I'm like, dang, like 
do they even practice like <laughs> yeah I mean we do but it's like a, it's pretty short but it's like it's to the like we do what we got to do you know I've heard his concept and it's pretty cool it's, it's a pro-life concept yeah you know, we get in we do what we need to do he, he, and he said that he, he looked at studies saying that you know if you keep a team in for too long that the the attention like the attention deficit it, it dramatically increases a, I don't know from like an hour to like yes an hour and 30 like it's like a big crash um and so you guys are you're in there get it in do what you need to do and you're out yeah, that little, that's that, a pro like, which it was completely different because at OSU, like his, his mindset was we practice for three hours a day, same, same. but like it that's was right. the first two is a normal practice, what we're used to, what we're trained to do. And then that last hour we're mentally fatigued. So if you can push through that last hour and you can learn mm. and do in that last hour, that's going to be the fourth quarter. That's going to be overtime. So that was like, and then you go to Arkansas and it's like the opposite. It's like, nah, let's not, we're not training that. Like, let's just keep you sane and in, in peace. And then go to the game and just right. be play as you play, you know, and which I think both work. I think it depends on the people and the team yep. you have. So certainly. certainly. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Starkly different mindsets, but <laughs> absolutely. I mean, they both found success in that. I mean, he was six. They went to the final four. Both both coaches are final four coaches. Yes. And so they, they found success in, in what works for them. So, yeah, that's definitely a stark difference. It is. And I'm sure it's a stark difference just from Maryland to Oregon State yeah to Arkansas yeah Yeah, that's just the cities alone yeah it was I I took a world tour that's why everyone always says but I'm but like I feel like I learned a lot too like Mm. growing up in Idaho going to Maryland completely different situation than I've ever been in my whole life which I super I enjoyed it so much Mm. because I felt like I was like whoa this is a completely different like culture this completely different like demographic that I'm used to and I enjoyed it because I feel like I learn more about myself everywhere I go, go to Oregon state. I'm, my parents are from Portland, super comfortable there. Like it just felt, that's how it felt. Then you go to Arkansas in the South and it's just like, wait, what? This is another complete like different situation. So, but it was fun. I feel like I learned a lot. Yeah. That's dope. When you you play with the great players, I remember you were with Chelsea, right? Chelsea. Chelsea. I remember watching you guys play. Maybe it was your last game. Probably. And just like, she dropped like 40 and you, Oh, she probably, and this was our UConn game. We beat UConn at home that year. That's and Baylor, right. Yeah. You had a, that's right. I remember that. Everyone's like, Arkansas? Like, yeah. like you guys had, had great players and were under a great system with a great coach. Yeah. So you can be anywhere in the United States. I'm telling you. And, and win some big games. It's just all about the players you have and the system you have and people buying into the system. Absolutely. That's a huge part of it. So, okay, you, you talked about you played with, as a pro, like you had a pro-like system. Yeah. You get drafted. Okay. To the Las Vegas Aces, which is a successful team. They've been a successful team since they went to Vegas. Yes. What were your feelings getting drafted and and knowing that you were going to a team, you know, that was really on the up and up and had potential to win the championship? Um, I think one, I was just excited to get drafted just because, I mean, I feel like that's a big moment, but also everyone knows like when you get drafted in the W, it's just like, it lasts like 10 seconds because then you're like, Oh, go wait. Yep, yep, I have yep. to make this team now. Like there's nothing set in stone. It's like, okay, now I got to go to training camp in two days, fly out and like pretty much perform to make this team. So it's like, cool. You got drafted, but that don't mean you're going to make the team. And so honestly, my mindset shifted. Like after I got drafted, I was like, Oh, this is a team with a bunch of great players. This is a team that's going to bring in people to win now. So like, I have to make this team yep. and I have to like pretty much, impress them so that they feel like I could be a part of that break and down so, training camp I haven't talked about training camp much on this podcast training camp yep. my training camp went like I got there because it's hard to because of COVID yeah. Ooh, so the first right. three four days maybe I was by myself training with a coach individually and then we play we did like everyone kind of showed up maybe yeah like a week into that and then we started playing like just I mean pick up learning some of the plays uh five on five and that, and then like, I mean, people dwindled through the list and then, mm-hmm. and then to the end, but even to the end, I had no idea if I was going to be on the team. Right. And like, even, even Bill told me that he's like, we might like, we, someone could get cut somewhere else. Like yep. just kind of be on. And like, so you always have to be on your toes. It's like, just keep performing every day. And I, I was like, felt like I had been playing well. So I was like, okay. And you still feel like that, like a month in the season. Mm-hmm. I think when you're like that 11th, 12th player on the bench, like, just kind of like, Okay. It, it may not even be anything about you yep. personally. It's yep. just what, Hey, this fits our organization better. And you're like, Oh, okay. And I think you, you learn that playing. I learned that playing my first year is like, you really can't take it personally. 
because it may not be you. It's simply business. Yeah. And they don't business. care about you. <laughs> okay. They, you could be the kindest girl. Yeah. And you can be getting buckets in practice, but it's, it's, it's business. Yeah. And so, I mean, it was nice though, having a lot of players, I feel like that knew they were established mm -hmm. and like, it was kind of like, they all were super helpful on just like, I mean, I was the only rookie too. Ooh, I was yeah. like that too. So, I, and that's, rough. people don't understand that. I feel like that's hard. Like, cause I was, it's I looked rough. through the league and I'm like, man, that's so nice to have two rookies yes. because you're going through this first situation together. You have someone like that is like brand new with you and you kind of just naturally bond. Mm -hmm. And not that I didn't bond with anyone, but I'm like, they've all played on Vegas, every single one of them. Yeah, for the they last, have a, a very close. Yeah, yeah, three, two years. So like they have their people, you know? And so this situation, I mean, it was good though. It was nice being on a winning team. I had friends who had got drafted and like they were on losing teams and their situation was like they were playing, but they were miserable. They were losing. I'm like, mm. I'm not really playing, but we're winning. So I was on a team. The only rookie <laughs> wasn't playing and we was losing. It was just, it was <laughs> just the a worst, triple worst. threat. <laughs> yeah, like I'm it like, okay. triple threat. So <laughs> at least you're winning. And that, that yes. does help a lot. That does help a lot. And that does help a team come together. I mean, you learn a lot about people too when, when you're losing. I learned a lot about my teammates about my vets we was losing I saw I'm sure a different side of them that they would would show if yes. they were winning so it was I'm sure it was a, a fun it, experience it was a fun experience I feel like and like especially on Vegas that year we had a lot of personality so it was fun to be around mm -hmm. like I think everyone just kind of like hear everyone's stories and like I don't know and I mean Bill in himself is a character I was saying, what was so. my playing for Bill Lambier honestly I'm intimidated by him when you we said, were walking by when we were all in the bubble like and we got in the elevator at the same time we just like looking forward like I, he just looks so just so he is stoic so so stern like he just that's what he said but he's so very he's it. very I don't know like uh, he's very just like how he presents himself I think exactly how the media presented like he's mm. very like tell you how it is like uh but he's also like funny like he's a like big teddy bear but like he he hides it really well but like, he'll tell me like in practice, I remember one time, I'll never forget it. See, it's still in my head. I shot, I shot it. I kind of like bricked it. Like I was a little nervous. I think it was in training camp mm -hmm. and we had a meeting like a week after something like that. And he was like going through what everybody brought or something like that. And then he was like, destiny. I mean, she can't even, she can't even hit a barn if she tried the side of a barn, if she tried, but at least she makes it in the game. And I was like, am I supposed to take that as a compliment? <laughs> or just, I just sat there quiet. I was just like, I'm just going to. I'm just not going to say anything, but like, that's how he is. Like, he just says stuff that like that, but like in general, like you can tell he does care and that like he wants to win and he wants players that want to fight and win. And yeah. so I respected that about him. Yeah. I think that's, I can tell that he's a, a coach that cares. Yes. Like just the way that the, you guys interact. I saw the videos you guys interacted with him at the, yeah. at, you know, in practices and stuff like that. And I used to be like, he just looks like he just is just me, but and then we we like pick at we like pick at him and he it's funny because he's like he's like such a dad too so yeah. it's like that was the like you saw a different side of him I think that a lot of people don't see yeah I love that because I think a lot of people see like the, yeah one people think about the Bill and their playing days yeah they think about the bad boys and they already have that in their mind and then yeah he is a, a large man he's he's huge intimidating he is huge what is he like how's all he's he, huge there's a photo of me and him and i'm like is i look like 6 11 he's like 6 11 he's yeah. huge and he's like just big and in general a, and he's a, a solid man and so yeah. i think you know looks can be deceiving like you said he's a, he's a really great guy and great coach and cares about his players and he's found success and he yeah has built the foundation for the aces to this day you know Absolutely. Now they have becky but the reason the aces are so good is because of bill yeah. so shout out to him okay rookie rookie year i also want to talk a little bit more about the transition from kind of the outside things of basketball rookie year like the traveling the food okay the, what was your experience like I mean you had a different experience even with with Oregon State did you you guys fly private no at Maryland great. we flew private great you and then like the same that's just the pack, pack no no private and then private like one game like NCAA game Pac or Pac-12 Pac tournament, tournament. Yeah. yes that's same. it yeah and then uh SEC yes absolutely yeah see y'all got big money see the Pac-12 yeah. that's, that's nothing the Pac-12 we are treated like regular class citizens. We are not treated like, like everyone's like, huh? like no. you get first class, you get great, you know, this yes. you know, restaurant food, you get Ruth Chris. Every, I'm talking to Ty Harris and she was just saying like, they don't do check, check bags and like that just blew. I'm like, wait, you don't check your bag. She's like, no, we have a food private. Like, why would you check your bag? I'm like, that, that was like when I went to Arkansas, the training table, they had like, it was like 
seven, eight chefs, this huge cafe. You can go like four times a day. I was like, we did not have this at Oregon State. Like, I'm not even kidding. I was like, and the guy's like, how do you want, like, what do you want me to make you? I'm like, you will make me anything I want. And he was like, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm like, time out. What? Four times a day I can go to like three times. I, I mean, don't NCA me, but like I, it was like two or something like that. There was a takeout window. You could take it home. You can order on your phone. I was just like, wow okay okay so you were coming from the best at in playing with the sec yeah okay great you went to the, <laughs> the WNBA, and how did you feel you you're flying commercial again i you were you were used to that flying with the pack yeah but you had a, a taste of it you know in arkansas so what was it like transitioning back to your flying commercial again um the fans may not be as much as you're used to yeah what else the food you got to get your own food that I was like damn yeah, like that was confusing I was so used to in college they take care of you like you're gonna get whatever meal that you need breakfast lunch dinner they gonna take care of you you never yes. have to go out unless it's like after a home game for Stanford we have to go get our own food but that was it anything else they take care of you there's when you go to the league it's like dang like yeah I think that I think it was more just like I had heard about it so going in, I had heard about it, but like when you experience it, you're, you don't even feel like a pro, like, mm. and it seems really weird. Like when people say like, and I'm like, we literally are the NBA of, of women. Like, yep. and you're telling me I'm sitting in an airport, like, and people are coming up to all the players. Oh, let me get a photo with you. Let me get an autograph. And I'm like, there's a reason that people don't fly commercial because of the fact that yes, we like the, st- the people that are sitting right here, yep. like. Like when I was on my teammates were celebrities. I don't yes. even care what they They were celebrities. No, for like sure, for sure. When you're walking around and you're six, eight, six, seven, two, and stuff like that, yeah, you stand Liz is out. Celebrity on her own. Yeah. Yeah. So. And so yeah, like her, I can imagine that's crazy. It, and it's just crazy too because you see them and then we're sitting not first class. We're sitting like just in I think what is it plus or something like that. Yeah. Comfort plus, plus or yeah. something. Economy yeah, plus, yeah. which is like dope, but like it just doesn't make sense when you when I flew private at Arkansas. I think just. I don't know. It just didn't, didn't make sense to me. Or yeah. like, I just experienced everything by myself too. Like mm-hmm. getting my own food. Like, it's like, yep. we just show up at the hotel and it's like, all right, like yep. go. And I'm like, you're going to let me just roam the town. Like anything I want, any food I want. Hey, you're, no, one, no one's here. They just get what I you want. You can eat McDonald's every, every day. Every day. Like, every day. They don't care. I was so scared to leave my hotel. I just door dashed everything. <laughs> I was so scared. I was like, I'm not going to have anyone. So I'm just going to door dash. But it was just like more like, I think re- made me realize too that there's so much room for improvement yep. and steps forward for the yep. league that are bigger and s- like it's the small details I think of how we present female athletes mm. is when you see someone flying commercial not that people who fly private are more important but it's like you add a little bit of like respect to that name yep. you know yep. hey we respect you guys enough that uh, we're gonna f- make sure that you're flying comfortably that you're getting there on time that uh, your flight won't get canceled that you're sitting in spaces, you know, that, that fit you in your body. Right. Yep. So I think it's just a respect thing. Yep. So I think that's why I realized in due time, but <laughs> a lot of people, especially people playing on the East coast, the South, like they've, they've come from essentially like someone playing like, like a pro, like royalty, like, like yes. you're in the NBA or something. And then you, you go to the WNBA and it's, and it's, and you're it's like, different. what the heck? <laughs> it's different <laughs> for me. I was used to, I'm like, oh, okay. This is everything I'm used to. The only yeah. I wasn't used to was like the food. Yeah. But everything else on my, yeah, we flew commercial. Yeah, fans weren't that, <laughs> like we didn't have a lot of fans at Stanford. Like yeah. we had a smaller gym. So even if it did fill up, like it wasn't like playing like in the SEC. Y'all got big old yes. arenas. So yeah, it can be a culture shock. So yeah, that's just something I, I, I like to bring to educate fans. Like it's it's different. Yeah. It's very different. And improvement is coming. Improvement, it's it's happening as we're, we're speaking today, but much more needs to come in order for the WNBA to to be considered uh, a top league in terms of at least yes. uh, amenities. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Moving on. <laughs> okay. You made it past college. You made it past the league. Okay. The league is over. It's time to play overseas. Okay. Me and Destiny share the same <laughs> agent. Hey, Mike. Uncle Mike. We yeah, had Uncle Mike <laughs> on the podcast uh, a couple episodes ago. Really? Yeah, yeah. He Aww. was on the podcast. So came in and talked all about the CBA and all that good stuff. Um, and he presented to you to play in Turkey, correct? Mm-hmm. A lot of people want to know um, what, like, how does overseas come about, especially as your rookie season? Like, people are like, okay, so do you ask about, because it's, it's not like college. You don't ask, like, okay, what's Spain looking like? Unless, yeah. unless you're like that player, a vet, yeah, yeah, you know, up there and they can be like, okay, like who wants me? Yeah. 
now options are options are presented to you mm -hmm. did you have certain options or he was just like okay turkey is going to be the best thing for you i had i think an offer in hungary and an offer in turkey mm -hmm. and like between the two he kind of presented that turkey would be the better option just because the league and and in just a situation and the team that I was going to. And so I think I, it was pretty early, like May, mm -hmm. like right, honestly, right when I had just started with the aces mm. that I had signed my overseas contract. Yeah. So I knew I was going to Turkey for a while. Okay. So, and both of them, I'm like hungry or Turkey. I don't even know the difference. <laughs> so, and you go in, like, you don't know anything about overseas because I feel like in college, they keep you so coddled. Like yes. you are a college athlete. Then you step up, you step out of the, the, out of college the w comes like in two weeks the draft or the draft is like two weeks after you finish then you go straight overseas yes. and all this stuff is like you haven't been able to talk to an agent the whole time you're in college yes. so you have no idea you're yes. like i think this is the best option yes. for me i think this is what i should do so you're, it's just kind of like you're just kind of going you i mean look you have to have a good agent because i feel yeah. like you have to trust them enough to make the right decisions for you because you have no idea i had a week to, to choose my agent from college to the draft maybe like 10 days was that the same for you I I got lucky I got lucky mm -hmm. I didn't have any agent offers like at first I had one small one and I something I was like oh, I don't know this is rubbing me the wrong way and then like a, a like one of my friends came to me like a coach and she was like just call like this was my agent mm -hmm. when I was in college and stuff and or when I was a pro I was like okay yeah I called him he was like I usually don't take rookies and then he was like <laughs> he take rookies. yeah and then he was like he was like something about you I like you girl and I was like hey girl okay, hey girl <laughs> and so I was like okay so you'll be my agent he's like all right let's do this I was like okay and then it ended up being like I mean he's awesome so uh I got lucky so I didn't honestly I didn't even know the timetable of it I was stressing yeah. though yeah it's quick I felt like I was back um in high school again I felt like I was being recruited again by agents that's what it felt like yeah. I had like uh, one agent came and came to Bakersfield we had it was you, like yeah, you like, hosted it it was like a home visit. Yeah. That's she came crazy. to Vegas. We had dinner and she paid for the dinner. It was just like, it was that's just too like, big nah. time for me. She came to dinner. <laughs> hey, bird is too big time for me. All right. That wasn't me. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I was wanting, I always want to know like what people's experiences were when she was an age of mine. I felt like I was in college again. I was like, shoot, people like taking visits. Mike didn't do that. Mike just had a phone call. Mike yeah. is very, <laughs> very simple. But yeah, I had like somebody come down. She lived in Los Angeles, so it was easy for her. Okay, that makes sense. She came down, big school, talk, chatted, and then it was kind of, then like it was like I had three agents. It was like I felt like just I was in college. I had three teams. That's crazy. Three agents, and I had to call. I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm I'm going with somebody else. Oh, see, <laughs> I'm happy I didn't have to do that. Those are the worst calls. Was just, I was just like, all right, well, you're my agent. Let's do this. That's easy. That's simple. Yeah, I, I felt like I was letting, letting the college coach down again. Like Dang. those those calls are like so like dramatic. Those are and, hard. Like, I'm like, I'm so sorry. Like we connected. It was a short week, but we yeah. connected, and I really liked you. But I'm sorry, I'm going with somebody else. I feel like they will be the best for you yeah and then they they send you that whole like it's okay best of luck yes. and, that. and you're like dang they're so hurt right <laughs> now <laughs> my dad always tells me like remember it's a business they're gonna go find Absolutely. another player in a, in a second it's a business you'll be fine that's what he had to tell me because I was like oh, it's God, true though break your heart like and ultimately it was, it was it was uncle mike um honestly hey. like going into like uncle mike like he wasn't like the, the agent that came down to Bakersfield, like gave me like the flat, like he would just like, he would tell me how it is. Yeah. It's going to be, I'm going to work hard for you. And that's what it's going to be. And ultimately like I, I chose him because he, he's my sister's agent. Yeah. And so I felt like he knows her. So I feel like it would be kind of like a family thing. And, and, and it has been now. I'll call him Uncle sense. Mike. Like we talk almost all, sometimes we just be talking about life, just life. Like, and he's just such a good guy. He's a so, good guy. So shout Look at us Mike. shouting you out, Mike. So, for the fans, you guys know who Uncle Mike is, so I'm, I'm happy that you guys got to experience him. But okay, Uncle Mike brought you turkey. Yeah. What were your so you didn't have any expectations? You didn't even know, like no, you didn't even know. And a lot of people get turkey and hungry. No, <laughs> honestly, that was me. I was like turkey hungry. Like where Everyone am I was going? like, you playing turkey? I'm like, no, I played hungry. Oh, that's right. Yeah, food like, hungry. I, I get the association, but there's starkly different countries because I played in both. <laughs> and people want to like I, I feel like there's a pain in reality when you go overseas like especially for the women's game that like we're all of us are going to this beautiful like Barcelona <laughs> that we're going to these things and it's they like love and basketball yes they do they think oh, like you're going to Spain. I'm yeah like, yeah, yeah but, like, it's, it's oh you're going to Italy oh okay and it's like okay honestly no because because I looked at the town I was like oh my gosh where's Kaisery it's in the center of Turkey mm -hmm. there's nothing to do there really honestly I mean I love you Kaisery but like there was yeah, nothing to nothing do there. there the same same situation when I was in France, it was a tiny town with nothing to do. And you're literally just overseas playing basketball. And so I like, you're not, I mean, you might be in the Barcelona's if you're lucky, 
there's like good situations there's great yeah. cities I'm not gonna say that there's all bad cities but I'm yeah. saying like a lot of the people even in the best cities like some of the city uh, teams in Budapest like they they play in phenomenal a phenomenal city but they have the most rundown gyms yes. the oldest gyms and the, the teams aren't that good so it it just depends yeah it just depends but yeah I ended up going to yeah, Turkey it, it I left literally like a week after I finished season in Vegas Woo! We'll talk about the transition from playing yeah. WNBA and having to go overseas. The time is so small. Really? My first, I think my I, I had a week my, my rookie year. Yeah. Especially if you're a rookie, when you get older, instead of game, you be like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I need I need some more time. I'm old, <laughs> my body hurts. I need time to be with my family and, and they're understanding because they know what, what you can do. Yeah. Overseas, they don't you haven't played with anybody. So they're like, no, nah, we there's no bargaining. We need her. A week after she yes. finishes. They wanted me there early too. And I couldn't leave Vegas because mm-hmm. they were playing for yearly qualifying. Mm, and yeah, I was like, yeah. I can't, like, I literally can't just leave Vegas. They were like, you don't even play on Vegas anyways. I'm like, I still have to be here though. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> like, like, I still have to be here though. So that was funny. It's it's crazy how it happens every, every single year. Overseas is pulling for you to come earlier. Yeah. While you win the WNBA. While you overseas, the WNBA pulling you, hey, we need you at training camp. Yes. It's it's like a constant pull. And you're like, well, Dane, like, can I get a break? Like, that's what I felt like my entire like last five years. Like, I'm like, dang, where's my break? I'm going overseas. Like, people telling me, like, every time they're like, Oh, when you go overseas, I'm like, I'm going in like four, like two weeks. So like, Jeez. dang, you ain't getting no rest. <laughs> <laughs> there's no, there's really no break. There is no break. You're fatigued. You're going straight from one system to another to a completely different country. Yes. It's a tough transition. And I know my first three years, it took, takes me time to adjust. Absolutely. It's my, even this last year, because I was going to a completely different country, it was like, it's a, definitely took me time to develop a style of play. It's completely different from Hungary basketball, Hungarian basketball. Yes. To Turkish basketball. Overseas basketball in general. In it's general. just different, different ball, different everything. Describe Turkish basketball. Uh, I want to see if it's no defense or offense. <laughs> is that a is that a good way I could say that? But it's like, don't think bad. Just like, I think that oh man, Turkey is really good basketball. I think because there's really good players that go there. Yes. I think every yes. team you play against in Turkey has either it's a, a uh, say a WNBA player, a former WNBA player, yeah. someone who's committed to overseas and is like an overseas legend or somebody. And so I think you always get quality players play to like to play against every, literally every game. Yeah, yeah. You also have like the Fenners who are just stacked. Fenerbahce was, let's talk about some of the players that have Fenerbahce. You had uh, Kayla McBride, you had uh, Jasmine Thomas. At the you time. had, oh yes, right. She, she left a little early. Um, uh, Satu. Satu Sabali, Elizabeth Williams. Um, I'm oh, uh, I know you're talking about. There's they had like six like six. B. Kia Stokes, Zali B. Yeah, freak. Like yeah, they had freaking six WMA players on their team. Like they're like the freaking monsters. And you have to play against them. My team, we lost against them 40. <laughs> and it was a hard 40. Like I'm telling y'all, I, I was like, I was like really trying to ball out. And we like it was still like a, a 40 point loss. My sister came to the game too. That you know, I was like really trying to ball out in front of my sister too. Like, like I scored. There's like crowds like silent. We're losing by 40. Like my team was just like, yeah, E. Like I'm, I'm working for my. <laughs> so like, but those good quality basketball, like those are yes. great players. So it's yeah. like you, you play them what twice throughout the Turkish league. Yep. So it's like you're gonna get, you're gonna play against good players. Yep. Luckily, the team I went to was Euro Cup, so I got a little experience of Euro yep. Cup for a yep. little bit. Yep. Um, but I'd say Turkey basketball overall, that's pretty much what it is: offense, no defense. <laughs> but like a lot of up and down. Yes, it's a lot of running. Like, and you're usually playing like, what, 38, 35 yeah, minutes a game. Turkish, like, love Americans. Like, in Hungary, I was like, I played 20, 20 25 minutes max. Yes. That was it. Like, it was like, we we a team. Yes. Everybody gonna That's get minutes. That's how it was in France. Yep, we're a team. Everybody gonna get minutes. You're not gonna be no superstar here, okay? Yeah. We a team. Turkey, superstar, baby. Go get the ball. 40 minutes. <laughs> Go get the ball. Etika, Etika, back to Etika. Like, <laughs> like that was the style of play. Like, it was, was like, it's true though. Like, I just, I just stopped asking for a sub. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it, I feel like I was in high school again. Like, you, that's what you feel like, you know, when you decide a team in high school, all the ball's going to you. Yes. You're a player. That's what I felt like in, or I mean, in, in Turkey. Yeah. That Turkey, def- that, I feel like that was the kind of big thing. It's like, I went from being what, the 11th, 12th player mm-hmm. on the bench on Vegas yeah. to, I walked into my first Euro Cup game, walked off the plane, and I played 40, what, like yeah. 38 minutes? Yeah. And I was like, 
okay, this is it, this is how it's going to be every game. Yep. And then you practice what for an hour, maybe two, an hour and a half yep. a day. Practices are pretty light. Yep. So like, I think that they take care of the, the players though, as much as like, like in terms of our bodies and stuff, mm-hmm. when I was in Turkey, as much as we played 38 minutes, 40 minutes a game, yep. I feel like when it came to practices, they were pretty light on our bodies. Like yep. at least for what situation I was in, it yep. was really helpful because I was like, okay, I actually need to be doing more because I'm out here eating these no. kebabs and stuff. And it's, it's, coming, it's coming on. No, I felt the same way too. Like practices are pretty light. I honestly felt like when you're describing your college experience, like playing from Oregon State versus playing with Arkansas and Maryland, like that's what it was when I was playing in, in, in Hungary. We're very attention to detail. Yeah. My coach is very stern on defense. We focus on defense a majority of the time versus when I went to Turkey, it was like play. Yeah. Not Film much scheme. Small. Yeah, not much scheme at all. Like just go. Like they would like list the players one time. Like, okay, so what are we going to do with them? Oh, we'll go, we'll go over and practice. Okay. The next day, practice. I'm like, okay, so what are we gonna do? Oh, the next day, we we we'll go over, go over it, and it's just like, and that could just be. I'm sure with Fenerbahce, it might be a different experience, but I feel like my experience in Turkey, like, yeah, it was less less about attention to detail, less about scouting, less about video and all that good stuff, and more just about hey, go out there and play. Absolutely, I you mean, know what they can do. The fact in my situation, mm-hmm. I our coach like left to go to her team mm-hmm. mid season. Yeah. And so the person they brought in didn't speak any English for mm-hmm. our new coach. And so that was like, that's when I knew I was like, Oh, they're really just like play basketball because yeah. I, me and the other American, we didn't understand a word that was being said the entire practice. Yeah. And so the fact that we could still play with the team and stay on the same track, that would never happen. Like yeah. at OSU Stanford, that would never happen in that situation. That would never happen when I was in France, I would have been lost. Yep. So like, that's why it's just get out there, go play and figure it out pretty much. Yep, yep, and then out. like, we're going to tell you stuff that we think might help you. But honestly, even if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. <laughs> that's how a turkey battle is like, we're going to give you a scheme, but if you want to follow it, you choose if you want to follow it or not. That's how I felt at least. Big facts, big facts. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's 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 so true. Um, Turkish basketball is just a lot more lax. It's oh, a lot yeah. more lax style of basketball. It's fun though. It's a fun, it's fun basketball. You're playing against some of the best players Absolutely. in the world. It's a lot of, I, I love my Turkish experience playing there. So, I mean, it's the reason why I got the contract that I got, you know, to play in the early team. So, yeah. Shout out to Turkey. Hey. Okay, last question. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Okay, so you didn't expect anything. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is a question I've, I wanted to ask for a really long time. I honestly wanted to, to make it into, uh, just in general. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Just in general, yeah. Um, I was honestly thinking about making it an episode, but I think I'm just going to make it a question. Maybe I'll ask it throughout for, for other players. What do, what are you packing when you bring overseas? Oh, or now overseas? I'm primed. Like and I know primed. what I'm bringing. Your, what, your first year. I have a bringing? list on my phone. As you should. If if anyone, <laughs> I have a list that of stuff it's, when I was there. It's appropriate to make a list, um, especially like rookies. Like ask ask players, especially if they played in yes. that country or if they just play. If they're just a vet, ask them, and they typically have a list. Like I have a list on my phone. I send my list to my brother. He's about to go play overseas yeah. in, in a month um my friend Stephanie Mavunga she was on on the first season like she has an extensive list of things that she brings from like from like little ponytail holders yes to hair products it depends where you are too it it does depend because when I went to France I was like oh my gosh I've been missing my hair my hair gel and I could just go down to yes I could just go down and get it the grocery stores I could get everything I needed it was easy turkey I had nothing and I like and that counts for basketball. I had nothing. That counts for the house. I had nothing. And I was trying to find stuff. You're not going to yeah. find the equivalent. You're going to be stuck. Okay. So what's on your list? Okay. Oof. Just just name a, I'm couple thinking, of things, I'm a couple of key essential things that you need. Ha- hair ties for sure. Yes. Uh, a, a lot of hair products. If I'm in yes. Turkey, a lot of hair products. Yes. Uh, I like Mio. Okay. Because in Turkey, uh, you don't drink the tap water. No. At least out the water tap, you don't drink any of the water. Yep. So I like like the little flavored squirters. The flavored, yeah, okay. Flavored. Uh, yeah, for the flavored water. Okay. Ooh, what else? I oh, Pepto Bismol for turkey. medicine. No, literally medicine. medicine. Ibuprofen. I am the team pharmacist. Okay. <laughs> for my American teammates, if they needed anything, I got them. I'm telling I was like, I'm yo, Tylenol. Tylenol. Yes. And you will not find any of that anywhere. Mm-hmm. So like all that was something I was missing. I was just talking to a friend of mine, my trainer that I was working out with. Um, he's from Germany. I'm just saying, like, man, like you need a prescription for everything. Like you can't you, yes. you can't go to the pharmacy just for cold medicine. Like you gotta mm-hmm. get that. You gotta go like it's behind the counter. Like you gotta go like ask him, like, I need yes. cold medicine. And you gotta ask the team to like to, to go to the doctor, prescribe you for some for my day. Yes. For some night. <laughs> No, that's, but that's why I say Pepto Bismol too, because when I got to that's Turkey, yep. I like my stomach, it oh my gosh, food. Yep. hurt so bad. And like, 
when I thought about it, someone was like, I like watched a TikTok on it. And they were like, when I go overseas, I bring Pepto Bismol for my stomach. I was yes. like, I didn't even think about that. That's a big one. So that one, uh, for basketball, like at least when I went to Kaiseri, they didn't give us any undershirts, nope. any leg sleeves, any yep. shoes, any really honestly, any shorts or anything. So honestly, you have to bring yeah, all yeah. your own workout oh, stuff. stuff. No, yeah. Right. Like practice stuff. And then it was like, all right, that's it. And you're just like, uh, socks. Yep. I had, I didn't get socks. I was like, yeah, I bring everything. Yeah. I didn't bring any of that. And I was like, and my teammate Brooke, she was like, you didn't bring anything. I was like, I didn't know. Like, <laughs> that's, but that's true. Like going from the league and even going from, uh, from college, they provide everything. everything. They provide practice clothes. They provide the uniforms, shoes, like all of it is provided yeah. for. And then you go overseas, like my rookie year, the same, like we had, pra- like I was practicing like in it, things that I brought. Yeah. So like basketball short, I had to bring my own basketball shorts, shirts, spandex, sp- sports balls, rocks, everything. And then we had to take it home and you got to go home and, and wash, wash it yourself. As opposed to when you're in college, your team washes it. Yes. Completely different. I would bring. And they don't have dryers overseas. Yeah. I, I, I asked for it this year. See, once you learn, it's one of those things. I, I asked for a dryer and I yeah. asked for a dishwasher because when I went overseas and I didn't see either of those, I was shook. One, I didn't even see a microwave. I was like, how much? Yeah, we'd it? have a microwave in Target. I'm like, damn, what's just to cook my stuff? Like, quick, they're like, put it in the toaster oven. I'm like, what? For 30 minutes, I got to wait. That's what I'm saying. So nothing, like, yeah. nothing is quick oh there's so much stuff uh I definitely would I wouldn't bring as many clothes clothes as I brought yep just don't. because I don't need them like I'm exactly if I did need them honestly I can go buy them cheap somewhere yep like you, you if, go to mall you go to mall overseas they got malls yeah spices your own spices your own very spices important. very important your own hot sauce hot yeah like all the flavoring stuff ranch ain't the same ranch <laughs> ranch, ranch. Dang, uh, like just anything, like uh, uh, any sauce, like I peanut butter like, ain't the same. Peanut Fry butter. Peanut butter. Oh, can, like if you like American, like candy and snacks, especially in Turkey, you better bring them because you're not going to get no hot Cheetos, no nothing out there. Unless I don't know about Istanbul, but Mm-mm, no, we'd have to I actually brought say. hot Cheetos for the team to eat. Yeah. Like yeah. I didn't have any of that. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to bring this. Yep. Those are, I feel like those are my, like, uh, oh, uh, tampons and pads. Big those are huge because those are different there. Tampons, all right. They're hard different. to find overseas. And usually, like, sorry, men, if you're listening in, but you, <laughs> I'm excited to have a tampon. It's, it's, it's one without an applicator. Yeah. It's, so it's, it's and they're hard ones. to find, though. Like, it's yeah. really difficult to find. So, like, those are one things I would probably bring. Just, like, because I feel like since I've learned now that I'm like, okay. That's a huge one. Tampons, y'all. Going overseas, bring your own tampons. Yeah. Pads, you can find pads overseas. Yeah. Uh, especially in Tokyo because Turkey is like kind of a conservative country. So yeah. tampons are a bit harder to find. And um, a plug in, a lot of them. Mm, yeah. An adapter. And, and an extension cord, though, because a lot of the applicators, in, especially in Turkey, on the walls, they're like in weird places. <laughs> so you have to like put the. I put my, I learned this from my other teammates too. Like that have played overseas. My teammate had like an extension cord. I'm like, yeah. why? She's like, because the plugs all the way over here. I was like, you're a genius. That is very true. Yeah. I mean, having to uh, plug in my fan from the opposite side of the wall. Yes. Cause there wasn't a plug. Like I needed here in this area. Great question, man. This is, this is great. I'm going to, I'm going to keep asking this to, to folks. You should. I, one thing I would say, I think this year I'm going to do bring more like room stuff. Like so I can house my house up a little bit, like, so it's more comfortable. That's nice. So I think I'll take some clothes out, but bring like, I don't know, some lights or something, mm-hmm. a mm-hmm. candle, a mir- something that keeps me homely, you know? That's nice. Yeah. For me, when I go overseas, I always buy a Christmas tree Aww. and that's my decoration from de- December to the time I leave. That's so cute. <laughs> I do not take the Christmas tree down. I keep it there the whole time. It just reminds me of home. Turkey's hard. They don't celebrate Christmas. Yeah, they don't celebrate Christmas. So you're like yeah. by yourself. Yeah, I found I found one in a store that That's they, they sold some small Christmas trees and I keep that up. That's kind of my decoration for the rest of the rest of the season because uh, I don't really decorate my, I need, I got to. <laughs> I need to do it this year. All right. That was an amazing question. Okay. Now on to the best. We're done with the interview portion. That okay. was the interview portion. Okay. Now to my favorite question of the show. Okay. What has been your wildest overseas experience? I think my wildest overseas experience was in Kaiseri for sure. Um, probably the situation with my coach not speaking any English and probably the situation like with the club in paying. Yes. Like, cause I think you have to learn. Uh, it's a lot different cause you've never been paid before in college. And then when you go overseas, it's a lot different depending on each country. Yes. And so I think just learning that you get to know countries a lot easier. Like I know what to expect going to Turkey this year. 
yeah you ain't gonna get paid on time in turkey that's that's <laughs> just the, that's just what it is that's, that's what comes with it. Yeah. turkish great basketball minimal defense late payments <laughs> yeah but Come you'll on. get your money like i got <laughs> i got my money but it's just like you just have to be patient for it you're gonna get yeah mine's like i was um for my team with Beshitash, I was two months, two months late, or they were two months late for my for my payment. Two months, two months. So they owed me two months of payments, and it was two months late. I was just thankful Turkey was a little cheap though, because I'm like waiting All for Turkey's my payment. Cheap. I'm like, okay, at least I can survive, you know. And it's hard for like some of my teammates who have homes. Like I, I'm, I'm good. Like my car, my car is oh, paid yeah. off. I live with my mom when I come back home to America, so I don't have you know a mortgage. I don't got you know any bills to pay. It's tough for like teammates who. Yeah. Ooh, they got bills to pay or they got to take care of their families and like when your payment's not on time like that hurts them and puts them in a stressful Definitely. situation and so for me like I'm a lot more lax when teams don't pay me on time like I'm good on my finances but for yeah. some of my teammates like they need that money they taking care of people back home yeah. they, they got bills to pay and so and it takes time to send the money to America to your other bank account if you yes. don't have it directly and stuff like that so yeah and yeah. another thing with Turkey like I don't know if you have the same thing um we had a Turkish account Yes. in an American yeah. account yes, versus like when I'm in Hungary they just direct deposit into my American account yes but in Turkey like you you have to transfer your own money over yeah. from that Turkish currency to American money and then from American money you got to transfer it over it to your American which account. is a lot it's a lot like you're like kind of like your own accountant and in Turkey they like not that people don't speak English very well there but like my experience when I would go into the bank of the bank I went to they spoke no English and so I always had to bring like someone with me so that's also taxing because you have to be on their schedule yep. too and so it's just difficult because you're like trying to communicate like I need to send money and they have no idea what you're saying yep and you're like all right we're going to the bank um <laughs> an hour before practice like Frank I'm trying to sleep yes <laughs> you gotta be on their time like that was always a situation for us like well dang if you need to go to the hospital you always gotta have a translator at the hospital because yes you need to know what they're gonna do so yeah overseas is wild man it's, it's fun wild. though it is fun. I had a coaching chain too. So yeah. like I said, my coach, her coach became my coach and we kind of had our situations like were the same, but like different times. So I started with a coach that didn't speak any English. Then I got Ihan. You yes. started with Ihan. Then you got a coach that didn't speak any yeah. English. So yeah. our experiences are very similar. Yes. Go Turkey. Go Turkey. <laughs> All right, y'all. It's been a blessing. Destiny, thank you for being on. This is a fun episode. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. It's, like I said, it's always fun when I have like a guest here with me in person doing the show destiny where can we find you on social media so the fans can go and follow you uh you can find me twitter instagram destiny slocum 24 pretty simple 24 yeah two that's four, my number two, two four gang yes sir <laughs> that's mine too that's mine too all right y'all and you know you can find me at birds the word underscore 24 on instagram on twitter and of course if you like to follow the show on twitter i love the interaction y'all keep keep tweeting me it's a lot of fun being on twitter with y'all you can find me slash the podcast show at one bird's eye view on twitter and on instagram you can follow us at bird's eye view dot podcast once again it's been another dope episode thank you again for tuning in thank you destiny thank you much love deuces see y'all that was fun